Here we are again. <laughs> you ready for this one? It's so, always so stressful, isn't it? Yeah, it's never like easy. The, the hour before we started the video, like, you just panic, just panic. running around. Absolutely panic. Do you know what? It's actually this bit now that stresses me out the most. Yeah. Waiting for it. Is that caught up already? Yeah. That looked like messages were coming through. Guys, uh, thank you very much to the early birds who are already in here. Uh, as ever, if you could just let us know uh, if you can hear us, do, is, is the lighting all right? Is the sound all right? Uh, and from there, once we've got everything kind of set and ready, we can crack on with what I think is going to be quite an interesting one today. And if we are even live, <laughs> right? Are we getting there, Ivy? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, the tablet is just loading. I think we're getting there. Are we in shot? Can people see us? You are in shot. Well, look at that. That is shining. <laughs> that is shining. I'm going to need sunglasses for this one. Get your polarized glasses out. Yeah. So a couple of minutes, as ever, we're just going to wait for other folks to filter through. If you could let us know in the chat box thing, if you can hear us okay, that'd be great. Everyone's saying everything's great. Fantastic. Thank you very much to all the early birds as per usual. We'll just give it a couple more minutes. Yeah, we'll wait yeah. for people to filter through a little bit. It's probably going to be quite a long Saturday for a lot of people. Barbecues out, a couple of beers. I hope no one got burned, like me. Yeah, you had a little burn, didn't you? And I hope everyone had a nice fun holiday Friday yesterday. A nice day out today. The weather is beautiful. It just rained here a couple of minutes ago, didn't it? It's freshened it up there nicely, hasn't yeah. it? It's, it's quite nice out there now. It's lovely now. Where's my phone? Because that's got all the screenshots on it. So we have a couple of people. Ethan, hello. Hi, Steve Ethan. Frank saying hi, Trout Gin Queen. And your sidekick. <laughs> that's funny. Have you got a gin and tonic? <laughs> have have you? <laughs> Uh, Julie Moll, hello. Hi Julie, thank you for joining us. Welsh Fly Fisher, hi. Russell thank you Thompson, for joining us. Adam Price. Uh, I'm never sure, Adam, you need to tell me, is it Adam Price Hunt? Is it just Adam Hunt? Is it... Well, Price Hunt is just a double barrel surname. Is it? Yeah, he's probably, probably just a bit posh than us. Ah. Uh, you're one of those that don't have a number on your house. <laughs> he's got no postcode. Uh, John Miller, hey. Thank you very much for joining us, John. Uh, Jack, David Cowan. Thank you very much for being here, appreciate Lee it. Grant, Nigel Dodge, someone needs to go powder their noggin. I've been polishing it for the last day or two. For the last decade, for <laughs> Jesus. Um, Kyle is saying in a gin tonight, Kyle, you should know me better. Every night is gin night for this one. That's not true. Uh, and, and the day is gin day as well. That's true, it's actually. Yeah, you, don't, you don't drink gin on that day that doesn't end in wine, do you? <laughs> <laughs> so true. Uh, right. Are we starting to fill up in there a little bit? It all starts to happen. See a few, few oh. familiar names in there again. Adam's asking, "Where's Ivy's merch top? Where's that? Where's what? Where's your branded top? Yeah, she's not allowed on. You're you only allowed one of these if that's your surname. Uh, you see, this is like an ongoing discussion in the house. Andy is refusing to propose to me. Yeah, it's not happening. So in fact, if you tried to get one of these with your surname. It wouldn't fit. It wouldn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> Literally wouldn't fit. Uh, ben Wilson, hello. Thank you very uh, much for joining us. Uh, Zach Baton's hi Yeah, guys. thank you, Zach, for being here again. Appreciate it. Hello, David. Hello, Craig, Craig Palmer. I like Craig just had a new puppy, a new uh, family edition, and it's so adorable. I think his name is Willow. Well, yeah, Willow, Willow looks really cute. Bit jealous. Uh, oh, Craig is sitting outside with a nice cold cider. I don't think of it. I, that's how I imagine Craig's general state is. I, I think so. Yeah, outside with unless, the cider. Uh, all I see is Craig either walking the dogs, either walking the dogs by the ponds where he's a bailiff, fishing On where he's brook. a bailiff, yeah. yeah, or drinking cider with the dogs in his garden, watching fishing. Sounds like you've got it nailed to me. <laughs> what else would you want to do? What else is there to do? So, do you want to start? Well, yeah, Shall we prob start? probably ought to get crack a lack in with the whole. Thing, Let me really, get my gin. We? <laughs> is, is this the gin moment? Is it first sip? So, uh, as always, first thing we want to do is say thank you very much to you guys for being here. Really appreciate it. Uh, we want to say a huge thank you to everybody working very hard in the NHS, all the frontline and key workers for keeping our world turning. It's, it, I don't know about you, it's increasingly more difficult because we get given these little glimmers of hope that maybe we'll get out and then it seems to not happen. And then they just destroy our hearts. But if you're an NHS 
uh, doctor or nurse that's involved in the whole COVID thing, that there is no glimmer of hope at the moment. Yeah. Those guys are going to be in it for a long time. And we're very, very grateful to have the best doctors and nurses on the planet in the UK. So thank you very much. In terms of the topic of the live stream today, uh, hopefully a few of you guys have come over from Facebook uh, where we kind of talked about this and uh, today's topic is stuff about fishing that really winds you up. Uh, it, could, it could be all manner of things and it, uh, we find actually increasingly some of it's quite small things, isn't it? But they're, they're, we've all been there. Something will happen during a day's fishing and it just makes you go, and there's possibly nothing you can do about it. Yeah. But it really grinds your gears. And we thought, given uh, how difficult the last few weeks has been, everyone's getting increasingly frustrated about not being able to go out and do the stuff they want. This might be quite a nice way for everyone just to uh, have a beer or two, have a glass of gin, blow off some steam. If you want to blame it all on us, feel free. That's what we're here for. Uh, but we just thought everyone, here's your chance to get it off your chest, get it out there. And hopefully at the end of this, we'll all feel a little bit better about things. Just FYI, if you want to blame Andy, he's used to being blamed for everything, so you're uh, more than welcome to. It's always my fault. I'm absolutely fine with it. Just a few really nice comments. Uh, Adam is saying, call me what you like. I can assure you have been called a lot worse than Price. <laughs> um, okay, probably by Ash. Um, Craig. Oh, no, hold on. Uh, John Owen is joining us. Hi, John. Hello, welcome. John. Uh, Nick Trotman is here and he's saying back, uh, uh, I think he's trying to say like good evening in Lithuanian, I mean, and Andy. Do you remember how it is good evening in Lith? Uh, it's uh, Labadiena. No, that's good day. Oh, sugar. Yeah. No, I don't remember. Well, Labas Vakaris. Nick, you trying more than is Andy right? is to, to. Did he get it? Second time. Yes. It doesn't count. Official Lithuanian person. <laughs> <laughs> and Adrian's saying, geez, uh, IB, is there a full bottle in there? Yes, there is. Actually, uh, it is a half litre glass. We've been buying litre bottles of tonic and it literally takes half a bottle of tonic. Yeah. Half litre glass. That's the way I like it. You drink like a Russian, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of the stuff that kind of grinds the gears that kind of will just irritate you during the course of a day's fishing or maybe stuff more generally about the industry, Feel free during the whole course of this live stream. If, if you want to get it off your chest, just throw it straight in there. Uh, the truth is, we nearly didn't do this one, did we? Yeah. We actually said this morning about half eight, nine o'clock. Should we leave it for this weekend and do another one next weekend? We're kind of oomed and odd about it. Right? So we'll throw the idea out there. And if anyone shows an interest in it, maybe we'll go with it. I cannot believe the response. To How this. many people were commenting My and texting and messaging us? Phone hasn't stopped all day, and I think that's possibly a reflection of uh, just the frustration yeah. that everyone's suffering at the moment. That we all want to go out and do this thing we love, but we have never had a response to a live stream or a vlog like this. That's as well, yeah. We had so many comments. People wanting to be anonymous was quite a yeah, big thing. Yeah, absolutely. Lots of, lots of, this is what I think, but don't mention my name, and that's absolutely fine. We had quite a few high names in the industry. Yeah, I, actually, actually, yeah, well. some, some really big names in the fishing industry who have said, look, don't say who we are, but this is something I'd like to go off my chest. And that's exactly the reason we, yeah. we did this, wasn't it? So, uh, I, be, I think what we'll do is we'll perhaps... I'll read three, four, five that we've been sent in off my phone. We can all have a bit of a chat about that, see if any of you guys can kind of relate with that stuff. And then we can have a look at what's coming in the chat as well. Does that make sense? Yes. Can I tell you what's coming in the, sh in the chat now? Actually, yeah. If, if you've got stuff in the chat, let's, let's launch straight in. I'm so, all for it. John is saying he won't propose to you because if you ever do wars, you get half of his fishing gear. Uh, well, John knows me very well. And he's once again right. John's right about everything. John but is. He's yeah. right about that. You're not having the rods. Prenups. We need prenups. 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 <laughs> uh, ben Blood. Hi. Ben. Hi Ben. How you doing? Ben, I'm so sorry that I did that to you. you no one deserves that. And please just block his phone number. <laughs> uh, that, that's probably what's been winding Ben up about fishing recently. <laughs> it's Andy. <laughs> uh, Julie and. Ooh, love the comment. Uh, Mark Hall saying anonymous here. Mark Hall is an anonymous. No, no, no. no anonymous. Oh, shut up. How, how do you say it? Anon, anonymous? You were right the first time. Was I was I? just teasing you. Oh. Yeah. 
I thought it was like a whole lengthen situation. I'm I'm what wines yeah, uh, Bradley Chal- Chalmers. Chalmers. Yeah. Brad Chalmers. Hi, Brad. No, Thank I, just, I know who it is. I just don't know how to d- d- pronounce. It's difficult. Is it words are hard. Words are really hard. <laughs> I'm so sorry. If you had a little drink. If you can, I don't know. If you can pronounce my surname, I will apologise even more. Uh, Stuart Shaw. Hi, Stuart. Thank you for joining us. Uh, so Russell Thompson is saying watching people not knowing how to handle child properly, putting them back, and then uh, end up dead. Does my head in? Well, I think I think one of the things that came up repeatedly and is is probably a great reflection of anglers. Mm-hmm is the amount of frustration out there for poor fish handling practices. Fish area, yeah. And and it, it's and through trout, through all the species of fish, people are all saying, this is probably the most common one actually, wasn't it? That and another one. Yeah, was, was people get really frustrated at poor handling of fish. And I think that's the same for everyone. I think you and I would both get frustrated by that, wouldn't we? I think that's something that, that it's not something we see a lot of in truth. It's actually something that recently, uh, probably since last year, I kind of kind of had a word with myself and said, just ignore it. If it's really bad, and especially if it's a fishing forum, I just tend to ignore it because the response that you get most of the time is, or oh, you just jealous, or um, what's wrong with that, or whatever. Like I just can't be bothered with the negativity yeah. when you're trying to like. I'm, I'm not even trying to be mean. I will. I will just like try and explain like that's not how you should handle the fish. Perhaps try this or whatever. Um, and then it's just especially if it's about unhooking mats. If you try to advise someone to use an unhooking mat like, rather than um, go, putting the fish on like a pavement or whatever, and then by uh, like the response you most of the time you're gonna get is. Well, you're putting a hook through the fish's mouth. Yeah, yeah, that's the, that's the real common one, isn't and it? And I just gave up, so I just ignored it. On the subject of mats, actually, and going down this kind of route, we had one that came through anonymously uh, via uh, Instagram from a, from actually another YouTube channel. Uh, it's got to be the photos of people with unhooking mats, but they're kneeling on the unhooking mat with the fish <laughs> actually nowhere near it for the photo. And do you know what? I've seen that quite a lot. I thought it was just me that had noticed that. Nope. The amount of times I've seen guys literally kneeling on the unhooking mat, and the fish is out here, so clearly if it falls, it's going nowhere near that mat. Unhooking but mat, as yeah. you say, you, you can't. It, social media is terrible for that, isn't it? Because if you jump in and say to this person, "Look, you're doing this wrong," they're going to take it badly. Yeah. Is the reality, and I think I think that it's it's a real difficult one, isn't it? That one is how do you educate you just can't educate someone by social media because that's not what people use social media for and definitely not on forums because there's going to be other people jumping in and again saying well you put a hook through your fish's mouth yeah absolutely yeah so so um fish handling i think most anglers that's something that really winds them up i think we definitely agree with that uh, miss danny smith is asking who's the real child queen uh, <laughs> I think we know who the real trout queen is. Although Danielle might have been the OG trout queen. <gasps> Caught a trout she, before you she did. Could have been. True story. She could. And on dry fly, first time as well. On a French leader, something you've never even done. Ooh. Oh, it's going down. Oh, it's going down. I'm after you and, and your cocktails. <laughs> um, Lewis Gaskell is saying, I hate when you find a good spot. Uh, it get poached and you tell the environment agency if you can get a hold of them and they do nothing. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I guess that's something that seems to be under the spotlight at the moment is is the whole issue of the EA and poaching. And there are very few anglers who wouldn't be frustrated at the moment at seeing people poaching. And I think it now it's so much more obvious because the only people who are fishing shouldn't be there. Yeah. So I think it, it, it is... A lot more obvious and a lot more offensive than maybe it usually is. The EA are massively underfunded and so stretched and actually... How many guys do they have across the UK? Oh, Six. God, not many. Enforcement officers, not many at all. And the reality is, the only people who have got any power to do anything are enforcement officers and police. And the, the fact is, like, if, if you ever talk to the environment uh, agency officer, they are all so passionate They're about great. welfare of fish and fishing and like poaching and like they're so so good it's just they so stretched out with everything um but this is where i think it's really important that even though that you think nothing's going to get done right there and then you always report if you don't see something if you if you see something that is not right because if they get two or three or four 
uh, in the same area reports, I'm sure they're going to be checking that a bit more often because that's going to be known as almost like a hotspot for poachers. All these so, incidents get logged, don't they? So, so it's really, really important. We all we all lock it, we all log it, and we all report it. But I do understand where Lewis is coming yeah. from. If, if you've got a chat totally. poaching right in front of your face and you ring the EA and no one and says no one's gonna do it, it's yeah. going to be frustrating. What I don't think we can do is take it out on the officers. No. This is guys at high level, at government level, who have taken the money out of the EA. Uh, they're the guys who are to blame for poachers not being taken to task and we need to start chasing those guys a little bit harder. Those guys need to know that we exist. Uh, so Nigel Dodge is saying two things uh, why me. In six to one years I have seen access lost due to anger disrespecting, uh, disrespecting landowners' property, leaving rubbish, just, just stealing livestock. Uh, the other gripe is I must have my money's worth, gang. Mm. Uh, well, I guess I guess on the first one, again, quite a common one that came up a few times was litter. Litter, and so many people say Yeah, dis disrespecting the environment as a whole. And again, I think it's it's a while while the litter side of it is is a negative around fishing, actually it's a real positive that the vast majority of anglers absolutely despise people leaving litter and all that stuff. So um yeah, that that's one of mine. I hate turning up Obviously, we, we, we don't really fish commercial waters, yeah. we don't fish high volume waters, um, but I hate turning up and finding rubbish, particularly when I can look at that rubbish and say that was an angler. Yeah. Uh, uh, packs of, uh, I don't know, tapered leaders came in, or the box that someone had just bought the flies from in the My shop. My favourite one is always a... Uh empty tin of sweet corn well yeah absolutely yeah you know no one's no one goes down to the river to eat a tin of sweet corn that is anglers it's pretty obvious it's anglers and as anglers we all need to do a little bit more and try and do a little bit more to help out one thing that. that did came up quite often is like fishing line and stuff like that being left out as yeah. well and not chopped out because that's such a big impact to birds as well like they they get wrapped and stuck in it especially if it's like in the tree if you snap a fly or a lure or whatever don't don't leave it there do you know what this was uh, i've i've got two or three i'm going to throw out at various points during this and one of mine uh, which we have talked about before mm -hmm. is it it's possibly slightly more fly specific but i hate seeing like four foot of line hanging down from a tree where someone's broken it off where they could clearly have just got it but they won't do it because they will think that will ruin their swim. Yeah, yeah, that's going to ruin the chance of catching the fish, and then by the you know they, they catch the fish or they spook the fish and just move on and forget it. It absolutely boils me seeing like long lengths of line hanging out of the tree. So bad. It really annoys me. One of our one of the stretches of the river we fish has got three breeding pairs of kingfishers in about two and a half miles. I mean that's that's very very rare, and I'm terrified that one day I'm going to come down and one of those kingfishers is going to be caught in line. So I make a real point whether I'm with you or if I'm on my own or if I'm with clients. If I see that line hanging down and I can get it, I'm getting it, no doubt about it. Yeah, that, that's one of mine. I hate yeah. it, I hate it. Because you can't blame that on anyone else. That is just like the litter, just like the ground bait bags in the sweet course. Yeah. That is anglers who yeah. should know better. And then if you do see someone who just leaves lines, stuff somewhere, and if you're not in a place where it's a little bit intimidating, like do do say something to people, make them embarrassed. I, I, I you just shouldn't do it. Like, I don't understand why people would do it. It's just pure laziness. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense at all. The, the, the leaving litter and going fishing are total polar opposites. Especially when it's glove waters. Like, you're literally damaging your own yeah. glove water. Um, so, yeah, that's not great. Uh, Ethan Rush is saying, someone seeing you catch a nice fish and then telling all of their mates about the spot which ruins it. Yeah, well, I think I think that um, this came up in another, in another live stream, didn't it? I think particularly for, for, for a YouTuber, one of the perils is that you catch a couple of fish from an area and all of a sudden that area becomes known. And I guess that's kind of a microcosm of that, isn't yeah. it? If, you know, if, if you're seen catching a few fish in a particular area... Or, or if people can watch your videos and see where it is, or look at the backgrounds of your photos and see where it is, people, you've you know you've shown people where fish are. They they're gonna go and try and catch them. But yeah, it's super frustrating because you will have put all the hard work into find that spot, find the area, and work it out. And possibly every man and his dog is gonna come and do it. Unfortunately, that's one that's not gonna go away. Uh, Adrian Ford is saying I had quite a heated discussion with two EU pike fishermen using a gag. Oh crikey! Oh god. Actually, it's funny to say that, actually, a couple of years ago, I had a pretty heated discussion with a shop owner who had one in the shop. Yeah, I um, remember that. Yeah, I made it very, very clear to him what I thought about the fact that he had a pie gag on his shelves in 2016. 
absolute joke. Who on earth is using a pie gag apart from possibly some of the guys who don't know any better? You shouldn't really be pike fishing by the sounds of it. If you use a pike gag, you shouldn't be fishing. You shouldn't be fishing. If you're too scared of handling that fish that you're fishing for, don't fish for that yeah, fish. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, Ethan Rush adds in fishing activists who think they know everything. That That's me, Ethan. What are you trying to say? Yeah, that could be us. <laughs> <laughs> that, that could be us. <laughs> um, John Miller is actually typing something in Lithuanian. Oh, wow. Um, and he's saying that what grinds his gear, although the translation is not that, it's a little bit more filthy in a way, which is funny, <laughs> um, is when people are handling the fish too long. Well, yeah, again, that's that's something that, that gets talked about a lot. I guess one of the difficult things with that is that each fish has a kind of different tolerance, doesn't it? I mean, carp seems to be able to survive out of the water as long as they go and buckets of water thrown on them for a ludicrous amount of time compared to say a, a grayling which you know 10 seconds that thing out of the water i just want to get it back in yeah, yeah. Um, so i guess the different fish have different tolerances to to the lack of oxygen and uh, yeah it, I've, I've watched the carp guys get a fish you know in a, you know to handle it really well and hooking that with like, proper cradle and all that stuff you know chucking buckets of water on it be like geez guys it's been out of water for like two full minutes like there's no way i could do that with a trout or a grain oh, or a pike. Know, it would be dead but they seem pretty comfortable with it and actually that seems to be the norm which is not my sphere I, of expertise i must say that does irritate me if i see someone handling a fish out of the water for quite a long time it does get really irritated to the point where like even if it's like especially if a fish had like a really hard fight or whatever mm. I would rather release that fish and not risk it or whatever just for a sake of a picture than play with it and like make it more tired than obviously deprive it of oxygen and everything then yeah no it's not cool but I was listening to a podcast um interesting about catch and release yep and people that made keep them wet yep uh, the whole hashtag and whole movement and they were saying that the recommended amount for having a trout or like a game fish out of the water is 10 seconds yeah that yeah that, and it's uh, not 10 seconds put it down rest it and then again 10 seconds it's just 10 seconds and then you release it yeah so that's a bit of a fact of the day uh mark hall is saying finding bits of tippet and fishing line with hooks attached just lying around the river on the bank so in a way you take it with you again yeah that kind of i th I, th I think actually fishing fishing litter annoys me more than litter because the general public just don't care. Whereas if you're an angler, I can't imagine you you would care. You could, of course you would care. So yeah. why does it still get done? And we see it at access points on rivers. We see it at lakes, canals. Every time you go walk down the canal, you, you will find a piece of fish and rubbish. You will. And it's just, who's leaving that? Why are they doing that? And I can't, I can't, I honestly don't think it is just, oh, I forgot or oh, it fell out. Like, you check that when you move a yeah. spot, you check that you haven't lost something, like your phone hasn't slipped or whatever. You always check. So surely when you turn around and you see all that litter, you think, oh, pick it up. Well, you would have thought so, but clearly not everyone. A lot of people in the chat are saying about the left line and left rubbish from anglers. So it's a, it's a clear big hate. Do you know what, actually, do you know, I'd say... Fishing with it is right up there on mine. I was I was talking to someone on Instagram today who also sent that comment about littering and 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 fly, like fishermen littering on the rivers. In um, Lithuania, they had a massive problem like nothing you have ever seen, like literally people leaving everything um, on on the banks. And then they had to make a law that where you're fishing, there's a certain amount of radius meters around you that even if it's yours or you just came to that spot, if you are caught. And in your area, there is litter. Any kind of litter, you get a fine. Really? It doesn't matter if it was there before amazing. you went. Wow. So whoever goes fishing, they have to pick up the rubbish from someone else. That puts a real responsibility on your individual. On your individual that, I, do, do you know what? I'm not against that. I imagine and that. And the fine is not works. small either. Like, the fine is quite big. So the amount of people that are littering there now has like drastically decreased or significantly reduced. Uh, Significantly reduced. Mm -hmm. 
Do you have any good ones? Oh, we've had so many, so, so many. I had Adam saying, surface fishing with bread and biscuits and an army of geese and ducks arrive. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> How annoying is that? <laughs> I guess the thing is with that is you can't, you can't hold it against the ducks. The thing is like, yeah, I can't hold it against them because if we're it's like tench fishing or bait fishing, I usually end up eating half of the loaf as well. Yeah, it's so. not their fault. Um, I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go through a few of the ones that came through. Uh, th actually, this was a really interesting one that kind of came through similarly, but in two, two kind of different messages. Uh, David Hemkin said, when you're at a lake, when you're at a lake shore and the ball and the boys on the boat are getting way too close to you on the on the shore. So I don't know, um, I'll roll this back to a, a time when me and Dave Sharples were on the River Thames mm -hmm. and we were pike fishing, we were pike fly fishing and you're bashing flies up against the banks. We were always so conscious because we knew that there were bar anglers in the stretch usually. Uh, and we were just kind of, you know, we were slotting casts up against the banks. And out, out, honestly, we, this guy was 30 yards in front of our noses. But because he was dressed head to toe in camo, we I hadn't seen see him it. until it was way too late. So we were basically <laughs> on his lines. And this bloke went ballistic at us. We were like, we couldn't see you because you're dressed head yeah. to toe in real tree. Like, how are we supposed to see you? But, but I, I, d I definitely think the whole, it's always ironic, isn't it? When you're on a, when you're fishing from the shore, you always want to cast as far out to the middle as possible. And then when you're fishing from a boat, you always tend to want to cast towards the bank. And there's always that crossover where it causes yeah. issues. I think, I think there were three or four guys who all said they are really frustrated when they're fishing from the bank and the boats come really close. If you're on somewhere like Rutland or Ibrook or somewhere like that, You'd be so annoyed, wouldn't you? You would. You found a couple of fish in front of you, and all of a sudden, the boat's like within casting distance. I think they'd drive you bonkers. I'm pretty sure I was on the river Darren once, um, Frenchly during the water, and there were three kayaks that went past. Yeah, they, they shouldn't have been there. Actually, that was one that came in kayak. And, and they weren't very slow or very polite either. Um, so I kind of stepped out a little bit because I, 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 I was wading quite deep. Like, I was probably higher than my waist so I was probably almost halfway through the river so I had to move backwards a little bit but there was like no thanks or hi or like anything almost like why are you in the water where we're moving past yeah it wasn't the most pleasant yeah, experience they're not supposed to be in there I on, know on the subject of kind of space giving people space uh, this is this is one that came through a cut again came through a couple of times in, in different guises I'm trying to find where uh, it was but I think that again this is one of my real big this is probably my number one I know we've talked about this mm -hmm. before um, basically every day that you're guiding space invaders and this uh, obviously when, when when you're guiding when, you, when you're with clients you have to be as calm as possible about everything you know if someone misses a fish or loses a fly you know that's just stuff that happens during fishing and you can deal with that the only thing that happens during a day's guiding that really boils me is other anglers uh, either encroaching way too close in the area that you're trying to fish or specifically on the river jumping in ahead of you and i seem to be a magnet for it, it, it there was a period like uh, last year where it felt like every time i was out with clients someone would appear someone walk, would walk past us and start fishing directly Repeat upstream offenders as well. there was there in fact yeah there was actually an instance where uh, i was with a couple of clients and we, caught a couple of fish from a spot and a guy came and said hi and asked how we got and we said yeah we're doing really well and then I was concentrating on my clients and he just kind of vanished out of my vision and my client made a cast and I could hear another I could hear another fly line in there it's got a very distinctive sound I was like that's weird and then all of a sudden this fly line comes floating down past us oh, God. and this chap this chap is a bush away if that bush wasn't there between us we could have poked him but because we caught a fish, and the fishing was pretty hard that yeah, day, yeah, yeah, it just yeah. jumped straight in. You know, oh man, it's seven and a half miles of water to go at. Obviously, I know it's for the clients, it's a bit difficult. You wouldn't want to start to see, you know, I think I would say something. I wouldn't say something like pick a fight or anything, but I would be so sarcastic to that person. So I'll tell you about the one time I did actually go to say something to someone. I've told oh, you this God, story before. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, this was pretty <laughs> embarrassing. So I was with two regular clients and it was boiling hot. It was a really, really tough day. Uh, we, were, we were fishing upstream and these two guys appeared and jumped in maybe 50 yards ahead of us. Now, 
for anyone who's done plenty of river fly fishing, you know, you just don't do that. You have to give people space to work up a river. That's one of those things that you just do. And the two regular clients, they come with me a lot. And I said to him, look, just keep covering these fish that you're covering. I'm going to go and have a word with these two because what they've just done is so out of order. I'm going to go and tell them. So I puffed my chest out. I was like, right, I'm having these guys. I'm going to, you know, I'll clear them off. They've, they shouldn't have done that. I got within about 30 yards and one of the guys looked at me and I was like, oh, geez, you look familiar. I know you from somewhere. And then the other guy looked up. Now, I'm a massive fan of 90s comedy, um, particularly shooting stars in the fast show. And they're in front of me, about 15 yards away at this point, because I'm still striding at them as if I'm going to start a fight, is Paul Whitehouse and Bob Mortimer <laughs> <laughs> getting rigged up. And I went from, right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have these two to, hi, guys, <laughs> how you doing? It's great to see you. My two clients, from, from a distance, they were 50, 60 yards away. They must have been like, what's he doing? What I he thought doing? he was going to yeah. go and sort them out. Giving them the charm. Yeah, and they're like, oh, yeah. guys, great to see you. I hope you really enjoy your day. If we can help with anything, <laughs> let us know. Fortunately, one of the clients was a massive fan of 90s comedy like me and thought it was the best moment of his life to have Bob Mortimer and Paul Whitehouse fishing in front the of same me, river, yeah. Fishing the same river. We sat and talked to them for 10 minutes. But yeah, that's, that's my story of the, of the only time I've actually stuck my chest out and gone right i'm gonna have these guys and it was two of my favorite comedians of all time we were listening to their book today we were listening to their book today and yeah. they were actually talking about fishing they're probably talking about fishing the why while you were guys there yeah, about yeah. the same day sorry guys <laughs> <laughs> and so chris is saying haven dog owners let their dog play in the water when i'm out wading that came up a lot dogs came up a dogs yeah. came up nearly as much as as litter yeah, I must a... say, the only time when I didn't mind a dog jumping into the river was when we were in Slovenia. Do you remember that dog? Oh, that there? massive St. Bernard's or something massive just came Massive St. Bernard's and he was the most gentle. It's almost like he went in there because he kind of like ran towards yeah. the river on, on quite high speed. And I was like, here we go now. And this is like the spookiest river you could ever be on. And like as soon as he reached the water, he kind of looked at us, saw us fishing. And like he was so gentle. You wouldn't even know he was in the you water. You literally wouldn't know. He just went in. And then laid down, and that was it. <laughs> you know, dogs, 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 and the general public and fishing can be a real problem. I remember we had an incident in Wales uh, on Anglesey where I'd lent a rod up against a rock and was fishing another rod. Yeah. And was fishing away, and all of a sudden, I just heard a yelp behind me, and this lady uh, with a dog off the lead. The dog had clearly gone to sniff the lure that was on the other rod. I didn't even know they were there, and I managed to get the lure uh, stuck in the side of the gob. Fortunately, there were barbers hooks, and once the lady had managed to calm the dog down, was able to slip it straight out. But there is a there is a little bit of ignorance from the general yeah, public about dogs yeah. and baits. It's probably a bigger problem actually with bait anglers because they're using smelly baits that dogs will find quite attractive. But I do sometimes feel like the general public and, and dogs and fishing can be a bad. It's so dangerous for your dog as well. It really is. You don't want your doggy to get hurt. Let me tell you about that lady on the Y. Uh, yes, yes, you have to told me. Total random lady. I was fish. I was fishing with again. I was with a client. Um, random lady who had nothing to do with the Haddon estate came up. Uh, license checked me. I had no right to, but I thought I'll I'll let her go on with it. And then she stood there and she kind of huffed, and she went, "This bit just here's my dog's favourite place to swim." I was like, "Okay, that's nice." She goes, "Do you mind if I let him go in?" I was like. Well, we're fishing it. She said, yeah, but this is this is his favourite spot. He like he likes to swim here. <laughs> oh, was that a weird lady though. Was yeah, she was freaking bonkers. But again, it's not one of those things with general general public dogs and fishing. Don't go to not always a great no. mix. Uh, Don fishing UK saying can remember taking two blackbirds out for a tree hanging from fishing line a few years ago. Both were unfortunately dead. Oh crikey! Isn't this scary that the first line that I read, I thought he was just talking about two girls. Yeah, that is a bit weird. Two birds. And yeah. then when he said dead, I was like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Moving on. Uh, Bradley saying flies not very often here. Individuals putting others down when they catch or non traditional methods such as the bung. Yeah. I personally think it doesn't matter what you choose to use if it's illegal. I see that often on like French leader as well and nymphing. Like if it's not a dry fly, it doesn't count as fly. But yeah, there seems to be a real movement at the moment, doesn't there, against the kind of more modern nymphing styles. I think you guys probably know where we are with this. Just let people fish. If, it, if it's not something you like to do, just don't do it. But but again, that's something that came up. We had an Instagram message. The snobbery still within fly fishing and overpriced memberships uh, with draconian rules like the dry fly only and stuff like that. 
Um, the, I mean, the, the, the membership thing is difficult because the, the prices are being set by the landowners and you will always be able to command a higher price for prime fly fishing water. I think that actually the kind of the, the fly fishing snobbery thing is either something that we don't encounter much or is something that we're so deeply embedded in we can't see it ourselves. I don't think we're snobby, but actually in this part of the country, I don't feel like it's that much of a problem. Uh, yeah. we, 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 we seem to encounter pretty open-minded anglers, particularly the cost side of things. I imagine if, you, if, if I earned my income but lived in Hampshire, test, testing the itching and all that, I'd be pretty frustrated at the, at the cost and snobbery and fly fishing because, yeah, well, I wouldn't be able to afford to fish. It's as simple as that. I couldn't do it. So I, I do think that fly fishing needs to I, work I a little bit harder to, kind of... to just chill out a little bit sometimes, definitely. It lo the fly fishing itself and the snobbery is rejecting their own potential new beginners and new people that would join because people, even if they tried it and then that's the first experience they get, I wouldn't want to keep on going. Um, Bradders is one of the best bung chuckers in the world. It took a bung anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Nick Trotman saying I had to get a second tackle box for all the stuff I got out of bushes saved me a fortune. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine it. How many times we got like weights? Um, drop shotting, not drop shotting weights, like a bit, oh, a bit less weights. Do you know, yeah, it, it, you know, it, it, yeah uh, particularly from a water which was very, very strict on lure angles yeah. and saying that they didn't want lure angles because lure angles yeah. lose more kit. The amount of bolt rigs we pulled out of that lake, it was so shocking. Many. With 40, 50 yards of line attached to them still, it was absolutely shocking. Uh, Dom is saying, Hob House, good choice. Yeah, I like Hob House, nice and cold. It's warm in here, isn't it? It is really it warm It's really warm in here. here. Uh, Russell Thompson is saying, don't listen, uh, don't listen, Bradley. If it's illegal, use it and enjoy it. Absolutely, yes. If it's within the rules of where you're fishing, you fish however the hell you want. And is saying how weird it is watching us on the TV and chatting. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ethan is saying it's only a little thing, but people will think it is wrong and cheating to fish squirmies. Well, yeah, again, that comes down to that kind of that kind of um, attitude around fly fishing. Again, I, I think I think fly fishing particularly would be very well served just to let people crack on with it. Yeah, everyone, everyone. You could say the same thing in in lure fishing. Everyone can say, well, if you're not fishing. Now, rapper, are you not you're not fishing uh, the light bait casters, or you're not fishing those like whatever yeah just just crack on if you're fishing within the rules then don't don't let the bastards drag you down uh matthew foster just joined good evening matthew thank you very much for joining us appreciate it matthew uh david hart is saying that i hear xander being removed from the midland canals by angling bodies i would love to be able to catch them in our uh, canals they haven't introduced into this country now for years do you know what actually yes 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 it's ridiculous it's absolutely ridiculous why are they still being taken out yep so frustrating well like catfish and sturgeon are allowed well be. well well more more specifically while it's demonstrably provable that the ecosystems they're being taken out of are absolutely fine yeah. there is nowhere in the world where a species of predator has totally decimated the entire population of the prey fish it relies on to survive because that's not how nature works but yeah they keep taking them out worse than the fact they're taking them out the fact they're lying about it just tell the freaking truth. You're taking them out and most of them end up down in Billingsgate Market. Yeah, yeah, because they're quite expensive. Just tell the freaking truth. And the worst part is, is that we have seen them being taken out and zapped. Obviously, they have to electrofish them while other fish are spawning. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. That, how ridiculous is that? Electrofish enjoying spawn. While other fish are spawning. It's heartbreaking. Uh, Story Choice saying, also the attitude between the different disciplines of fishing, like one is better than the other, which is nonsense, it's all fishing and we should celebrate it as a whole and embrace the difference. Couldn't agree with that. Everyone is equal apart from bream anglers. <laughs> I so agree Why with you. Why do you want to fish <laughs> I'm joking. Don't start. I'm joking. You oh, track God. on with the bream. <laughs> uh, so Bailey, I always look after a small fish like a small perch to a big pike, all the same. It's match anglers good on, which... I have seen they rip out the hook and don't care. Well, yeah, there's a there's a whole wormhole to go down there with the whole match anglers keep nets thing. Um, we'll probably leave that one alone for tonight. That's a whole live stream in itself, isn't it? Yeah, that's uh, that 
do you know what? If I felt more comfortable throwing it out there, that would probably have been one of mine. But I, I'd just end up being the most hated man. Yeah, don't be the most fishing. hated man. I'm not going to go down that, that route just yet. Exactly saying, having managed a small fishing, you get anglers and people who go fishing quite often. That can be the difference between people who pick up the litter and those who leave it. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine so. Craig uh, Palmer saying that he always picks up litter from um, his swim or not his swim. Good ideas. People like Craig, we need. Yeah. Uh, Adrian Vaughan is saying, I will put it out there, but EU anglers around us in Boston, Lin Lincolnshire, Lincolnshire, are the biggest culprits with leaving empty beer cans and food packages. It could be the case, I don't know. Uh, Scott Bailey is saying, I'm watching you while watching the lightning. Oh my god, do you have a storm there? That, Wales is really copying it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, Wales, Wales have got all the light. It looked like it was going to happen here for a while, didn't it? And it kind of drifted off. Ethan is saying, oh my god, Yeva, the kayak thing has happened to me so many times. I feel like tipping them over. Please don't tip them over. You're going to end up in so much, so much trouble. Don't. As much as you're tempted, don't do it. Do you know what? I'm actually not that convinced they make that much difference. I don't think they made a difference. I just, I just don't like the ignorance and the lying. Remember when we were fishing on the wire and we saw sneaky people set up a kayak where they know that they oh, can't that do it. that was incredible, They sneaked wasn't up it? the boat. Everything was so organised. They were dropped off. They pulled everything out. They were already all geared up. They pulled the kayak into the river, jumped on it. That was it. Like, they, probably, if, I don't know how. It didn't take the five minutes. Yeah, it literally didn't take the five minutes. They, so quick. They literally drove to the river fully togged out. So all they needed to do was get the yaks off, off, off the car get in the water and go. It was incredible it to was watch. It was really incredible. There's nothing you can do about it. Uh, James Wayne saying, I don't tend to get annoyed by other people using the river. They have as much right to be there as I do, but eti etiquette is everything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, you, you have to give people space, don't you? He's probably talking specifically about my spacing way of things. Yeah. Just give people a little bit more space if you can. Uh, Adam is saying the rod license needs changing to just an environmental uh, agency license and including kayak, canoeists, swimmers and other waterways users. Why should we pay and they don't? It's, quite, it's a great shout. It's a great shout. Mm -hmm. they, they wouldn't want to use these waterways if they were absolutely horrible, dirty, stinking messes. And the fact that they're not dirty, stinking messes is largely down to the efforts of anglers over the years. And I think we need to remind them to look at that as often as possible. So then they forget sometimes that it wasn't for the efforts of people who really like fish and people who really like bugs. These rivers wouldn't look how they look now. Uh, but I'm saying that woman who fed the ducks while we were after the trout at Bakewell. Oh, crikey, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that, that was in Scott's Garden again. Was it? Yeah, yeah. We were bombing cast towards the trout on the far bank. It was in one of the gardens. And um, she just came up and dropped a load of bread off the farm. Was it on purpose? <laughs> yeah. First of all, she shouldn't be feeding the ducks bread. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty frustrating. Uh, John is saying meeting Paul Young was a dream come true for me, especially when he did hooked on an amazing, uh, on a fishing amazing fly angler. He stayed the whole day and fishing. Ah, uh, good on him. Uh, it's important saying I had a dog pick up a baited needle. Oh god! But yeah. on the beach, or uh, on day, luckily got it out of its mouth, but it shot the needle and it bent it. So lucky. It's. it's uh, I just don't. I was, I, you can't really blame the public for not understanding. What they don't understand about needles and hooks and just how sharp line is when it gets wrapped around legs and stuff like that. It's well as as we proved on Anglesey. It's, it goes wrong so quickly with dogs because the second they feel sh anything sharp or anything tangly, they just freak out. And yeah, it's, people have got to be a bit more careful around anglers, I totally agree. Uh, Dom's saying, was barrel fishing with a lad and he left some baited rigs on his tackle box, a couple of that walked past with a dog and it went straight in the box and picked a rig oh, out. No. Luckily they were barbless hooks and we managed to get it out. The lad didn't give a damn and just said they should have it under control. <laughs> That's a touchy subject for me because I love dogs so much. Yeah, it's a real <laughs> difficult one. The other one saying that's because you're snob. Well, it, it could be. It could be. I guess yeah. one of the problems with being a snob is that you wouldn't know you were a snob. We could be. Maybe I we hope are. people would come out and say if we were snobs that we are snobs. Are we snobs? Let us know if we're snobs. You might be a snob. Oi! <laughs> I might be a snob and I might not know it. <laughs> uh, Alan is saying the fly snobbery is rife in the South, Hans and Surrey. I reckon... Um, without it's, it sounds like a real typecast, but I would imagine that part of the UK is the worst part yeah. for it because the the available capital per flyangler is probably so much more, and the cost of a day's fishing is so much more. You're talking about four or five hundred pounds a day. You get 
like two good season tickets for, for different clubs here. I don't get years though. That's more than has it a bit more nicer to people. A bit more chilled out. There's not yeah. quite not quite the whole money thing up here, is there? Ben is saying, I think that it's not very for ride fishing. I, I often get patronising comments about using split cane or fire fishing for pike using fiberglass. Do you know what actually on the subject of that, and Ben's got a great point, there was there was a really nice point somewhere. You keep reading through there because it'll take you a while to find it. We had we've had so many messages. I will shout out TMT William the Gamer, please. <laughs> He's asking for a shout out. I hope that was loud enough. Uh Tuck, hello. I hope the work was okay. Um the bandinator, mm -hmm. hello. Uh, Nigel Dyer saying, fished the test a couple of years ago and the beat keeper kept calling me sir. In the finish, I said, please call me Nigel. Nigel, as at the end of the day, I'm scruffy ass contractor. <laughs> We're all just fishermen. Once you're on the bank, it doesn't matter if what you do. You're a fisherman. Like, Madam, I would like, yes, please. <laughs> Keep calling me that. You are the snob here. I knew it. It's not my fault. It's you. <laughs> but no one called me that. So. <laughs> Uh, BCP, hello. Hey, all. Any more coming through? Or do we There's need... so many coming through. I, I thought you might have found your comment that you were talking about. Do you know, no, I haven't found it yet. There are so many. As ever, so organised. So organised. Um, Gun fishing saying, just catfish that need watching and kept under control. I, I so totally agree. Absolutely. Having spent some... And I think sturgeon as well. Sturgeon not an issue. Um, catfish, having spent some time on the River Arno in Florence and spoken to local attitudes there and how they felt felt about catfish. You talk about a river there that was that was prime with crucians and tench and carp and all these other species. And in the 25 years that the uh, Wells catfish have been there, they've basically wiped out the lot. Yeah. And all the ducks. Yeah. And waterfowl that was on the river as well. I I worry about catfish. I really do. But particularly as, as the average temperatures get warm and the water temperatures are going to get warm. I know a lot of people have defended catfish by saying the water's not warm enough in the UK for them to get big. It it will get warm enough at some point. I, I worry about catfish. Uh, Scott Bailey is saying, wow, the lightning is good here in Stoke-on-Trent. So probably Stoke. just, just around the corner from us. Cranky, then. yeah. Um, the Bandinator is saying, one of the marinas near me had an £11 Xander taken out from electrofishing a few months ago. It's ridiculous, isn't it? Absolutely ridiculous. That's like the, the fish of a lifetime. Yep. Got Mark Hall saying, those who judge you or look down on you for not fishing a famous brand. Totally agree. Absolutely, yes. Totally agree. Absolutely, yes. Fishing is not about the name of the sticker on your rod. Absolutely I think more not. so in fly fishing as well. People will look down on you because of the waders you wear or the uh, rod you have or the reel you have do you know what quite I, a bit i think i disagree with you there i think the worst tackle snobs these days are carp hangers i'd never I, but I, you, I you be, won't I, really yeah. encounter them oh, 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 oh. i mean never, the, yeah. the matched up rod pods and you know the, the problem is that i can't see them they also come off <laughs> they just vanish but no the amount of money your average the amount of money and kit your average carp hanger will need to turn up to a water with compared to your average yeah. flying bit. It's way more expensive. And the syndicates there, some Syndicate, of them. Syndicate, yeah, syndicates Ooh. have got really expensive. Carp fishing is far more expensive these days than flying. Sell fishing. a kidney and you might be able to get a day ticket. <laughs> uh, Cabby saying, I have only went fishing twice and all I have caught in the car and my friends twice. Well, we'll try and avoid both of those things. Yeah. John Fishing always think less of people that go fishing with a tinny in their hands. Yeah, yeah, I know where you're coming from there. It's just, yeah, yeah. Save one for afterwards, but while you're fishing. I love going fishing with a bottle of wine. Yeah, actually, yeah, you are fine of having a little glass of wine while you fish, aren't you? Haven't had it in a long time, but like, it's nice. It's summer, you're by the river, you come out midday and you're going to have a lunch. And like, there's always that time and fly fishing isn't there, then you're going to have like two, three hours window and nothing is really happening. So there's no point in trashing the water. You can sit down, have a glass of wine, if you're not driving, and then go back. Fishing. I guess that's probably not the not the kind of image that Dom had in his head though. I think he's saying like people getting shit faced on the bank. Okay. That's fine. The most annoying thing to me while fly fishing is when people ask me if there's fish in those waters. Yes, and actually I'm looking at something here that's very, very similar to that. And it, again, this is one that came up a few times. General public uh, so passes by telling me they have just seen a Leviathan five minutes upstream. The general public coming up to me telling me they're one fishing story, and of course they've caught bigger fish than me. And in general, the public coming up and saying stupid stuff to you while you're fishing. I have one from Anonymous Mark as well, very similar. And yeah, is that right? Let me scroll up to yeah. that one. 
uh, did, yeah, someone wants, wants to know how it's going, what fly I'm using, because last week they used a snotty brand March hair and caught 11 eight pound trout right where I'm standing. Yeah, so yeah, I think I think possibly it comes from a good place, but it can be a really annoying. Yeah, we have that loads. Yeah, actually, do you know what? I think you get it quite a lot I because you are much, of yeah. the female. Yes. I think everyone just feels like they need to tell you what to do because like, it's you frustrating might not know because anyone. I probably fished that river twenty or thirty times that year, and they haven't fished that for twenty years. Mm-hmm. But because they fished it twenty years ago and they caught that fish twenty years ago and that fly. They are convinced that that's what you have to use. I think I'm it, like, but I've just caught five fish today, like on this, and it, it wasn't what you think. No, but it doesn't matter. If you use that one, you will catch loads more. I think it's it's a particular problem for the river Y because a good portion of that river, the general public are allowed to walk, walk up and past, down. Yeah. And you can, some of those fish in the town centre are massive, so the general public can see them. And you know, you'll always get the, oh, there's some, there's some monsters in the town. If you see them, you've seen those big fish in the town. It's like, yes. Yes, I've seen a big fish in the town. I have no interest at all in trying to catch You know them. what, I think it's a good thing that you're always around because if I was there on my own um, and people would say that to me, I would be just sarcastic. Really? What, were they really? <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> big fish? Was there a shark? Actually, something that came up on the, on the kind of um, subject of that, um, we got a message saying that one of the things that really winds them up is uh, when they're fly fishing, this might have been Adam actually, when they're fly fishing for coarse fish on say a canal or something and someone comes up to them, sees that they're using fly fishing kit and will go, you know there's no trout in here don't you? Yes, yes I do, not fishing for trout, they're not the only species you can fish for on a fly oh, kit, yeah. come on. Yep. To be fair, I think, it's, I don't know if that's just people wanting to make a conversation. Yeah, possibly. You know how people will say, oh, have you caught anything? Or making like, are you are you fishing for grass carp if you're guesting in the yeah, car? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I think it's just people trying to make a conversation. I don't know. But but is it though? Because if you were trying to make a conversation, instead of closing it off by saying, there are no trout in here, they would say, what are you fishing for? True. That's a Some conversation. Are awkward, aren't well, they, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Craig is saying discarded braid far worse than mono. That stuff will yeah. really cut an animal. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. Fish. Any, any, any. I hate seeing any line discarded at all. Um, doo, 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 doo. What grinds my gears is that all the fishing experts on social media oh. are way too fast to criticize and embarrass the new angler of all age and sex rather than coach, educate and help. That's from BCB. Yeah, well, the, I think I think we touched on this a little bit on the one where we talked about social media, didn't we? And and some of the social media can be a little bit cliquey and a little bit kind of gang warfare and it doesn't always come across very well. Uh, my hope is that these young anglers or female anglers don't get pushed away by it because that would be a massive shame and really yeah. frustrating. Uh, I know you you had stick, you've been getting stick. I've been giving stick like for the last five years, every single day of my life. It's always a question, did you put it back? Yeah. Did it go back? Who let you hold that fish? Would that be one of yours, actually? Would that, as a, as a female angler, would that be one of yours? Do you feel like you get less respect? Oh, no one's respecting me. Literally, even till this day, I'm pretty sure everyone thinks the only reason why I catch fish is because Andy Andy catches the fish for me. He makes the cast, he puts the fly on, he lets me to play the fish when the fish is hooked, and then I just wind it in and just hold it for the fish. People have seen you catch fish in their vlogs. People know you can yeah, fish. Yeah, but still, not everyone watches our vlogs. That's true. Why not? I know. What else would you want Scottish to do? Scottish Island was a little bit uh, disappointed, or uh, should I say concerned, that we didn't have any alcohol. And then he said, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, actually, on the subject of female anglers, yeah. um, we've had two anonymous messages um, from people who said that one of their absolute pet hates, something that really grinds their gears, is you're kind of like, you, there's no other way of saying it, your bikini anglers and you, you've all seen them on bloody facebook or instagram or stuff like that specifically fem- What's that <laughs> specifically female anglers who seem to generate so much interest and so much visibility and have so much reach um just seemingly by virtue of doing a bit of fishing and having their norks out yeah, and Which, they get sponsors, they get everything given to her to them. Because they've got this massive visibility because everyone wants to watch the girl with the norks out fish. Yeah. Uh, again, as a as a as a as a female angler, is it is it frustrating to you knowing that no matter how 
hard you try to be a legitimate angler. The reality probably is that you would be more social media popular if you got your knocked out while you're fishing. Well, we talk about that very much, not just about people that get naked, but about just people on social media in general, don't we? And I always say that there's a big difference of people who it's very easy to press a like on Instagram or Facebook. It's not very easy to sit down through 45 minutes of a live stream or a video or uh, get in touch with someone and ask for their advice. But it's so easy to just press that like because there's a chick naked or half naked and holding a fish for a bra that was like all oh, rage two years bro, ago. Jesus. Um, it's so easy to press a like, but it's not very easy to have respect for someone. And I'm hoping that at some point I will have respect, even if it's a respect of five anglers rather than 500,000 people who are just going to click like because I have my tits out. I guess, I guess, I guess that the kind of the sponsorship and all the stuff that your bikini anglers get thrown at them is, is just because someone somewhere in a marketing department is looking at this person and saying, wow, they are really visible. And if we give them our product, then our product is also going to be really visible. And they're possibly not that asked about the actual quality of that person's ability to fish. It's just this person will be more visible. So we're going to we're going to put our eggs in that basket and not necessarily about um, what they contribute to fishing as a whole. Uh, actually, but one of the messages, one of the two messages we had about this subject said that she felt particularly um, frustrated. This was a female angler felt particularly frustrated that the bikini anglers with these 100, 200, 300, 400,000 followers on Instagram and stuff like that don't seem to do a whole lot of positive with yeah. it. It's, it just seems to be all about visibility and me, 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 fish, fish, fish. Whereas they've got, with that amount of followers and that amount of visibility, they've got the opportunity there to do something really, really good and long lasting and set a great example to the whole industry of what you can achieve as a female angler in the 21st century, which in reality should be the same as a male angler, because there's no reason why women shouldn't be as good at this as men. There's absolutely no reason. But it doesn't seem to happen. And I know well, that this, this, this one female was really frustrated about that. We talked about that after listening to the, we both listened to the recent uh, podcast. You know, April Vogue's Anger yeah. podcast, yeah. And um, there was a question there thrown to the lady who's constantly in the fishing and promoting herself in a bikini or like naked. Um, and she's really, really popular on Instagram. And she said, have you tried, instead of doing conventional fishing, try fly fishing? What was the answer, Andy? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, we've looked at fly fishing a little bit. It might be something we might try because it's an untapped marketplace for us. Now, if that's if that's how you're looking at getting into fly fishing and filming your fly fishing, you've got to be in it for the wrong reasons. If all if all going fly fishing is going to be to that person is an untapped marketplace, then you need to have a look at why you're fishing. Yeah. And, and but I think it's clear why they're fishing. Well, yeah. That's, that's their job. Now, it's nothing to do with fishing. It's just a money-making yeah, machine. Yeah, it's fishing for likes yeah. and visibility. Because it's, it? most, like some of the posts, is not even fishing, like holding a beer in a bikini, like yeah. promoting a beer brand or, I don't know, holding something else on a boat or whatever. Like, it's clear what they're doing. It's just sad that, obviously... I think when there there's no demand, that stuff will stop happening. But because the demand is so high... Yeah, yeah these, these people are the most visible anglers on the internet and that's why that's why the industry continues to throw themselves at them yeah it's a real shame uh, do you know i i can imagine that being a female angler and being really pissed off with that i think i'd be frustrated well don't fish is saying uh made them there every weekend uh mark hall no sorry adam saying winter grilling waiting with a bikini on mm. do you know what we tried it no one watched i must have been wearing the wrong bikini <laughs> i don't know <laughs> Um, Russell is saying, Ethan, if you do push them in. Uh, Gordon is saying, my daughter used to fish all the time when she was young and really enjoyed it, and now she's talking about fly fishing again. So respect to you, it's great to see women fly fish. It's great to see women fly fish. Women, ah, oh, thank you. The, yeah, there are there are lots. Thank you. There are lots of female flying are there? There's definitely not many in the UK. Um, Tuck is saying, I think Andy should do a full Bikini Bites video. I'm sure he would look lovely. He will not, I can guarantee. Yes. I've got the figure for it. He will not, <laughs> I guarantee. Nick Trotment uh, is saying, Adam Price, you had look like a bloody smurf. Yeah, you would literally look blue and yeah, purple. That'd be pretty brutal. Uh, Yorkshire Fisherman saying, So I may be able to fish my upland reservoir for a wild trout. What do you recommend? Oh, try to do it. I, I, 
in truth, I don't know a whole lot about still water fishing. It's not really something I do. Uh, if, if I was going to go and fishing up in still water these days, I'd be looking at um, foam daddies, sedgehogs, um, larger buzz patterns that float, uh, damsels and stuff like that. In truth, there are probably people out there in the social media world who know a bit more about that kind of stuff than I do. Uh, Matthew Foster saying, penalised for not dressing up with name brands. I went to a day venue for about... But five years ago, I got refused entry because I wasn't dressed like a fly angler, what? apparently. No way! You obviously should name and shame. Can yeah, it, feel free to mention who that was. That is ludicrous. They turned him away because he wasn't dressed like a fly angler. I never dressed like a fly angler. That or is, any kind of angler. That is absolutely ridiculous. Most of the time, I just go into my water gear, so I will be literally wearing office clothes on River Y because I will go straight after work. I'm not changing and getting naked in the middle of nowhere. Where like there's literally a road where cars going past. That is time. fly fishing, just yeah. doing that over and over again. It's so frustrating. That is ridiculous. Uh, Nigel Dart is saying, um, it's an interesting one for you, Andy. Oh. Question for Andy: Do you get any backlash with being a guide? As some anglers think, paying a guide is a waste of money. Uh, I've n I've never had that. No, uh, I, I touch wood. No, I don't. I don't think anyone's ever said that it's been a waste of money. Well. Nigel was one of my clients at one point. Uh, I think we had a pretty good day. Let me know. Was it a waste Maybe of money? Maybe that's a hint for you. Yeah. Are you saying? Are you saying that day was a waste of money? Maybe you are. If you are, if you are, let me know. That's okay. Um, no, I, I, not outwardly. Uh, I think the proof for you is that most of your clients are repeat clients. Yeah, and, and come back four or five times. They're a year. really, they're all really freaking cool. Um, I've always kind of felt like in the background there might be a little bit of animosity. Um, I am possibly the new boy on the block still. I'm a little bit younger than most of the guides that I know still. So I've, I've always kind of felt that, but I've never been able to prove it. No, I think is the answer. I, I've never, no one's ever been Good. off with me yet. Uh, Craig McDonald is saying, hi guys, I missed anything, ju did I miss anything juicy? You have a finish your goodies tomorrow. Okay, so on, on the subject of Craig, Craig was the first person to get involved in this. So when we asked the question on Facebook, uh, what really grinds your gears? Uh, Craig said, uh, uh, folk reinventing a fly and nicking it as their own. And the reason he said that is that's exactly what I did with Craig's jaw. So uh, Craig came up with a fly, which I recently found out is the biggest selling fly in the USA. The jaw is it? Yeah, the jaw itself jig, apparently the biggest selling fly in the USA. Um, and I changed it, I changed uh, one of the materials, made it a little bit slimmer. Um, but yeah, I, that, I ripped off Craig's fly. What I tried to do during the video is say repeatedly that this is Craig's pattern that I've changed a little bit, but yeah, I can imagine as someone who comes up with fly patterns, it'd be a bit annoying if, if some bull idiot from Derbyshire started changing it a little to bit. To be fair, Craig, it makes you feel better. I have improved Andy's version of your version <laughs> of the fly. The yellow cell. The yellow cell. <laughs> uh, sounds quite good, doesn't it? Yellow cell. What else we got like going that. on, Abby? Uh, Black, but BCP is saying, for example, you have Holly Allen, Claudia Darga, Marina Gibson, Zenia Drury, Gregorek. Yep. None of which get their kit off and are awesome anglers. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, none of them will have the social Black media. Like how I wasn't mentioned there. Well, he's got a point, hasn't he? Um, <laughs> none of them will have the, the social media presence of some of the bikini anglers we're talking about. Possibly due to the fact that they're European based and there isn't quite as big a market. But yeah i can't i kind of got the feeling that if if any of those women decided to start getting their norks out for social media posts their numbers would go up and that sucks i That's think ridiculous. i should i will just go fish bra monday i'm trying to catch any fish there you go hashtag fish bra that is not enough to cover my tips thanks Andy. <laughs> steady it's a family show <laughs> Um, Craig is saying, I wasn't having a pop at you, Andy. Yeah, right. Yeah, you were. Craig, it's okay. I totally understand. What else have we got going I on? I often tell Andy off. I'm always getting told off. You fill, fill your boots. Philip and Hague saying, gosh, late to the party again. Crikey. You sweet. might as well just switch it off. Anyway. You're learning your friends' hearts. Do you know what? That's one thing that really grinds my gears. Philip and Hague. Yes, Philip and Hague. Philip Hague turning I up late. I cannot stand Philip and Hague. Unbelievable. Yeah. No. And she lives in Yorkshire. Oh, careful. It's quite a big county. You probably just upset half the people watching this. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, Tuck is saying, people who think it's a waste of money are the same people who tell you the only fly lure you will catch on is in here isn't that one. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we've uh, you know we've had that a few times on the Y. Some of the old boys have come up and go, "Oh, you let's have a look. Wait, you're not going to catch on that. You'll need this." And within thirty seconds, you've caught a fish on your fly. And Norris will say, "Not in the least, Andy. I've fished several times with guys and learned more in one day than I probably would have done in a year." Thank you very much. Very kind. Uh, what's your take on crayfish? Kill them or put them back? Scott Bailey. Oh. I have a problem with that yeah. because I consider myself an invasive species in England. <laughs> and the last time when Andy tried to stamp on the, I think it was on the dove, wasn't it? It was a crayfish. I was like, no, it's just like yeah, me. you are. You are the Lithuanian <laughs> signal signal fly angler, aren't you? Oh, well, there's no doubt about it. We've got to kill them. They are. They are a freaking. Well, specifically, we're talking about signal crayfish here, not native crayfish. But signals are a freaking disaster. Um, I think we, I think I might touch on this last week, possibly. Uh, I don't think there are as many locally to where we are as they used to be. I get the impression that the numbers are going down a bit, but they they eat fry, they eat fish eggs, they eat invertebrates, um, they snip the weed up, they tunnel into the banks. There is very little good news unless you're a chub or a perch. And I don't think it's any coincidence that in the last fifteen years, as the or fifteen twenty years, as the numbers of Signal crayfish in the UK has gone up, so have the perch and chub records. Yes, yeah. Because yeah. they're getting fat and crayfish. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, Tuck is jumping into your defence saying, A green idol took my brother in law to a tr- for a trip with Andy. He's got the patience of an angry hippo. Patience of an angry hippo. And a ha- I'm not even sure what that means. And a cast to match, but after a rough, a tough day, Andy even managed to put him onto a fish. Actually, me and Steve, uh, Steve Tucker, we had a real, real difficult day. And Tucker like said, something I had tried to teach him for the past six months with no luck, Andy did it in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we did some lure fishing. Oh, was it lure fishing? Yeah, we did some lure fishing. We had a real tough day on the canal, but we, I think we all caught a couple of fish in the end. Uh, David Hubble saying, uh, Joanna Wolf, USA, cast 160 feet in 1960. Oh my god, Joanna Hubble, she's like such a fucking idol. Sorry for swearing. Icon. I- icon and idol, okay. just like everything about her. She's so amazing. I was listening to her podcast a couple of days ago when I was uh, tying flies and like when she was saying, she's like, oh my god, and then like, um, Tippet came out in 19 whatever it was and was like <laughs> like how can you live and like without <laughs> things that we're used to so much like yeah. now and she's like yeah and then um like that and that came out and I'm like Joan Wolf is the is the OG female she is she's she, so she's funny legend. as well she's absolutely fun, phenomenal she's fantastic um Craig McDonald saying let's just go fishing and enjoy it yeah, well, yeah, Craig's absolutely right. Don't go fishing, stay at home and tie my flies. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, Benedi- the Bandinator is saying, there's a marina near me in the Midlands that has an 80-pound catfish in, Ooh. so that's not true about the water not being warm enough. Bloody that, hell. That, and the, how, many, how much biomass has had, that catfish had to consume to get to 80 Whereabouts pounds? in the Midlands? If you don't want to go see it, message me on Instagram or Facebook. I would like to know whereabouts in the that's Midlands. That's a because massive we live in catfish. That's eating a lot of fish. Yep. Uh, GM saying my dog drives me crazy. If I go fishing with him, he chases my lures as I cast. <laughs> that, that, That's what I do. That'd be comedy. Uh, Ethan Rush saying most people that I speak to when fishing are usually really nice, but because I'm 14 year old, some people don't like that I'm fishing because they think I'm doing something wrong. Oh, that's really sad. I could, I could imagine. Yeah, I could imagine that. In the same way, I feel like people like to tell you what to do because you are a vulnerable female anger. I think people probably do that with young anglers as I'm well. I'm such a damsel in distress. Can't such a tell? damsel in distress. Woe is you. But, but yeah, no, I feel really bad for Ethan. Ethan, I kind of feel you. I always will get like, not just because I'm feeling it, but because I'm foreign as well. A lot of people will look down on me straight away thinking that I'm taking fish or doing something wrong as well. So yeah, I feel you in that one. It probably really sucks. But the good thing for you is you're only going to get older now. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Craig Palmer is saying, signals are also carry a disease that kills our native white claw. Uh, otters like signals too. So yeah, that's yeah. Well, do you know what? I reckon that's what's made a difference on the dove. We find a lot of signal claws. Where yeah. we used to be finding crayfish, we're now finding shells. So I think, I think the otters on the dove actually made a difference there. Uh, one thing that came up repeatedly, and this is this is the this is the dark side of of this. I reckon. Um, okay, I'm going I'm to combine them in the same kind of shell, and then you guys can kind of let us know if it's the same thing. Social media anglers, uh, of which we may or may not come under that bracket, possibly, and bro stuff. Yeah. Oh crikey, people do not like that term. No. Nope. People do yeah. not like that term. I think the industry is going to have to get a little bit smarter about this because it 
appears from a lot from a lot of messages that were anonymous it appears that a lot of people are massively cool with the whole pro staff thing these days and again i can kind of see why it's yeah. very saturated it's it's not just that as well but it's so see-through in some cases because you can see one angler having five different pro stops in like two years because yeah. they're going to keep changing and then every single time they change it's going to be a new different thing that they're going to recommend message here from peter baker on facebook thank you very much when people are team members of a company but think they are sponsored know the difference you get 10 percent off what you will pay in return for that company getting free advertising i mean that is probably the reality of quite a number of deals out there is that no one's that you know people aren't getting that stuff for free it's, it's essentially just a, a trade price deal so your manufacturer is still making their money on it they're yeah. selling it to the consumer for the same price they would be selling it into a shop anyway but the whole kind of pro staff thing uh is getting um uh, to a bit of a head i think that was probably the most common one yeah people and clearly people have uh, a, a strong hate against sponsored anglers or anglers that associate themselves with one like just one single yeah 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 i'm trying company. to find out there are a couple more as well anglers anglers who think sponsorship is validation is another one yeah absolutely i, I totally get that yeah i totally get that uh obviously this is kind of difficult for me because i have a, a sponsorship as such that they don't actually sponsor me they sponsor my business i guess it's a gray area but yeah the whole the whole sponsorship thing and the pro staff team or the influencer I, I think that's the better word these people content creators and influencers yeah yeah and they're not sponsor, sponsored yeah managers. people seem to be getting a little bit fed up of it these days and that came up over and over again i, I don't like that in certain instances as well well it, it seems to, it seems to be a little bit uh, we well, use the word transparent and i think that's absolutely right it's it's becoming very transparent people are hopping around from basically whoever said whoever said there's yeah. a free kit that week is the company they're with and then that will change and that will change and, and it used to be that like your best anglers get picked up and they have fished for the last like god knows how many years and they're really really good anglers and that's how you know um that that person is going to be sponsored because they were really good and they deserved it and they got there because of how good they were and you could trust their opinion because they were that experienced they knew they they, they haven't fished with one board etc well we're, we're possibly going through an era now where instead of anglers being guided by experts they're being guided by influencers yeah and there is a big difference between someone who is an expert in their field and someone who is an expert at creating content and possibly the lines there um for, for the manufacturers the lines are getting a little bit blurred and that's what's come across i think that was without doubt the number one subject that came up with sponsor, the sponsor most interesting primes. one and the most like dark and yeah it is it's a real difficult way you know it, it's it's kind of a difficult one for me because i am on both sides of that argument um i you know i've, I've made it very clear in, in the vlogs that we've done i get some kit from sierra i don't do it with savage gear anymore but i used to um but that was that was never a kind of content deal it's because i guide people and they want me to put the kit in the hands of those people so I guess I can kind of back it up a little bit, but you do see some instances where you you kind of wonder why. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. What's the chat in the chat about I that will, IP? I will throw a question uh, out here. Do you trust sponsored anglers in UK or just what do you think about sponsored anglers in UK or like your social media influencers the whole altogether? Pro, the whole pro thing. staff, yeah. Yes. What's people's opinions on that stuff these days? That'd be really interesting. Uh, so I have some comments here saying something I had tried to teach him for the back. Oh no, oh God, that's an old comment. Um, Alan Price Hunt is saying ignore the meat. And I was a vice chairman of my old match fishing club at thirteen. My God, some good on you. Uh, of the old guys hated me. Mhm. Mm yeah, I can imagine uh, so. Posy saying I'm from Italy. I also see catfish, catfish as a as a threat to our environment. Threat. Okay, as a threat to our environment and endemic species, but some of my friends love it just because it's a big and can pull up a huge fight. But we have to remember, for, I think people lose fight that for a catfish to get to, it's not like a carp getting 50, 60 pounds just by eating boilers and pellets. Yeah. A catfish gets to 150, 200 pounds by eating a lot of fish. You know, we, a zander might get to 11 pounds by eating a relatively small amount of fish. A catfish can eat a whole shoulder of roach, not the sick one at the back. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'm not a massive fan of those things. Have, having having spent some time with the guys in Italy, yeah, I, I'd be wary about those if I was the EA. Mark Hall is saying, how sexy is double-handed spay casting? 
I know Mark's getting getting into his double-handed thing. Is he? Yeah, it's something I've actually will have a play with. I've got that that little switch rod, that five-way yes, switch rod. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll have a little play with that. Uh, Criminal Doll saying, hi, your flies are done, pardon the pun. <sighs> I like the pun. Done. So you see, what you did there? done. see what you did there? It's such done. a dad joke. Done. I like dad jokes. Uh... Um, talking catfish, they're great fun on a fly rod, Mark Hall says. And Philip Hake says, not on the water, but a thing that really does annoy me is seeing comments and hearing stories of comments made on social media belittling people and how and where they caught the fish. Oh, that's an interesting one. So, so uh, is, is Philip saying there that possibly people have said, oh, I've caught this fish from this river and people have gone, no, no, you haven't. Or you must have caught it on a spinner or on sweet corn or something. Is it, uh, Phyllis, is that what you're saying? Is this something you've had a problem with or is it something you've seen? Explain that one a little bit more, that's quite an interesting one. Scott Bailey, I fished the Trent and Mersey Canal and had loads and old uh, loads and old women slap me because I stood on one and I said they are not native in this country and when I said she didn't even apologise to me. The public, yeah, you guess you're talking about crayfish, yeah. it, it, people just don't get this and you, you yeah, it, that'd be impossible to explain. Uh, BCB saying in the words of Ron, Ron Burgundy, you stay classy, I mean, you get more respect for keeping classy rules. Only get known for pictures rather than fishing. I'd be automatically influenced that. Oh, thank you. So, so is he saying? Why are people being so nice to me today? <laughs> he's saying he do, doesn't want to see you. <laughs> yes, basically, that's what Andy tells me every day. Come he's away, like, try saying. Are you going to put some clothes on? Uh, we're in, we're in Aldi. <laughs> Just stop it. <laughs> uh, Zach is saying some science suggests trapping and killing signals uh, excess, excessive, excessive, exacerbates, exacerbates. The problem, the large males cannibalise the young and control number of some degree. Major problems on our waters that don't frustrate. Yeah, do you know what? Actually, I, I again, I, I kind of I kind of get that. I've seen instances in the UK where people have undertaken extensive trapping exercises and not really got anywhere with it. Whereas, I'll, I'll come back to our stretch of the dove because it's a bit that I know the best. We didn't trap them, mm -hmm. but all of a sudden they seem to be not there in the numbers. Yeah. I just I just think that as nature does, we let it balance it out. It yeah. took ten years to balance itself out, but there was only ever going to be so much food in there for those crayfish, and it, it yeah, uh, it seems to have worked itself out. Uh, Craig Palmer again jumping to Ethan's defence, saying ignore them, just carry on doing your own thing and enjoy fishing. Totally agree. Uh, Russell is saying, don't be scared to ask Nathan, that's how you learn, not enough young ones taking up fly fishing. Uh, Yorkshire Fisherman saying, Andy, are you as happy to go river trout fishing when it is clear and bright and when it's dull and cloudy? I, oh my god, can I say that you would prefer dull and cloudy? Of course I would. Of course I would. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, for me, your absolute best days for fly fishing on a river are those grey, miserable days where you you, your coat's on and off all day and the clouds are rolling over. Yeah, they're your, they're your absolute best river fishing conditions. Uh, days like today where it's been bright, I, I might possibly have gone for the last couple of hours, yeah. but I certainly wouldn't have been there at 11 o'clock. Absolutely not. No point. No. Um, but Be always best conditions when it's cloudy overhead for me. The band of nature is saying that he will message me on Instagram um, because some people might get annoyed if Yeah, yeah, well, that's totally, fair enough. Yeah. We get that totally. totally, yeah. And don't worry, I'm definitely not going to go to fish for that. Fish, I think they're so disgusting and ugly. <laughs> um, Ethan Rush saying, A mate of mine gave carp fishing up because of the horrible comment he was getting on articles on social media just because he was sponsored by Nash. But yeah, there, there seems that there will be, there, there is a resentment for the whole for sponsorship things, thing yeah. built. And it, I guess it's something that possibly wasn't there 20 years ago, but what I haven't worked out is, is was it not there 20 years ago because the guys who were doing it 20 years ago were only getting the deals because they were at the very top of the game? Or was it just because the whole thing wasn't so saturated with the amount of pro stuff? Well, it wasn't there, there, it's just no one wanted to say it. No. Because it probably would have made a better marketing if someone tells you how good this is when they don't know that that person is backed by that company. No, no I really don't think it you was there. No, so. I don't. I think the, the, the rise of social media and fishing, I think, has increased the number of pro stuff. like sponsored in a different way, perhaps not like money wise or anything, but like giving him a set up, sending him a free rod so he could give them a good review or something. Not um, doing that. No, not that. Honestly, smaller scale perhaps in the in the in the kind of pre-social media era of, of online blogs and stuff like that yeah there's probably a bit of that but it's just blown up in the last six seven years it, it, there's just something there that wasn't there before and i feel I, like it's I a real just, saturated marketplace i don't get anything 
anything pretty. I, mean, I just bought something recently. It's my new fly box. For anyone that's uh, watched our last few live vlogs, I've been trying to tie some flies, so I have filled my whole fly box with flies. Yeah, that'll be a vlog once we're allowed out fishing. Ivy's going to go out and see how many fish she can catch on the fly she's tied herself. If anyone wants to send me a free kit, please do. <laughs> that was shameless. <laughs> Absolutely shameless. Please, please give me free things. Yes, please. Give me shiny things. Yes, please. <laughs> Uh, Scott Bailey saying all sports and anglers are tackle tards. We had a similar comment on Instagram as well. Yeah. From yeah. an anonymous uh, person who said the same thing basically that um, people, he, that things have grind his gear is uh, tackle tards. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it's there. I mean, yeah, yeah it's there. Right there. Just so the I think he expanded on that again. Okay. Well, I can't, I can't see that. I've sent it to you. Yeah, but I'm, I'm on flight mode, so I can't see that now. But yeah, regardless, are they tackle tarts? Or I don't know. I, I don't know. But I know that I know that from the amount of messages and posts we got about it, that people are increasingly getting a bit tired of the whole pro staff saturation point. Uh, Philip Hake is saying, uh, oh no, hold on, I will say what um, PCP is saying. There's some right idiots that are now that are pro staff. I know a good bunch of people that are worth their weight in gold and way better but do not shout out about it i had rather pull them well this is this is the this is the problem when the industry is primarily looking for visibility over ability yeah is is that somewhere in an office somewhere is a marketing team or a marketing bloke who's going to look at those two anglers you've just talked about and say well he's probably the better angler but this guy takes a better photo and he's got four thousand more instagram followers so he's the one we're going to go for and, and uh, as I say, I think we've we've gone from looking up to experts to looking up to influencers. And I think that's quite a dangerous thing because possibly there isn't the same level of knowledge in some of these. Not all of them, by the way, but I think possibly there's not the same level of knowledge for some of these people. Well, Adam is saying, I think it ruins vlogs after a while. Without being harsh on you guys, I just lost a little interest when you could only really use Savage Gear stuff in five videos. Don't beat me up. Yeah, well, no, that's fair enough, and I think I think that is something we, we mean, have to try very, to approach in the past. It was very, very conscious when we started it. We we sat down and we talked for quite a bit, saying, "Are we going to keep? Are, are we going to get loads of hate and abuse for only?" Yeah, abuse I think I think we were we were we were pretty honest from the start yeah. as to kind of what the deal was. There, I was always I've always been conscious about it. I've, I've never had an issue using that kit. I do believe it's very very good kit. You go see me catching fish on that kit, but yeah, it. It could it could come across as being a sales pitch, but I always I always want that's always what we talked about avoiding, wasn't it? We never wanted it to be a sales pitch. But if you go out and do some pike fishing and catch three or four fish and don't say what you've used, you haven't made the right vlog. Yeah. Because people are gonna want to people the, the the number one question we get asked in the comment section is what are you using? So yeah. you, you kind of yeah. have to say what you're using. It just happens that I was always using Savage Gear stuff because that's the stuff I had. And to be fair, you I love a lot of Savage Gear stuff as well. Yeah, some great stuff. Um, I, I, we did our we did our top five pike and perch lures, didn't we? And there were a number of lures in there that weren't Savage Gear. My number but one favourite are still freestylers, which are the old freestylers. Yeah, the old freestylers. Are not yeah. being made anymore. Yeah. So yeah, I I, I totally understand it. It's difficult. Um, Philip Hake is saying I've seen mostly new anglers and juniors in my local angling club Facebook page. Well, that's good news. Uh, Andy saying, but the content otherwise is blockbuster, worth a tub of popcorn when the new video goes up. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Craig is saying, sponsorship is fine for the ones who deserve it, not the ones who have been doing it longer than it takes to boil an egg. <laughs> I I think I, 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 messaged, I sent a message to Craig about something like that today as well. Um, it, 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 it's, I can see the frustration. Even when I started fishing and it was like I fished for like literally six minutes, and some companies were approaching me and saying, "Who do you want to do?" You this? were getting approached by big I was brands. Approached by quite big brands, and I was like, "No, we're like, are you kidding me? Like me?" And I was saying to you how guilty I feel because there's going to be anglers out there that have been doing this for thirty-five or more years and are so much more better and more knowledgeable than me, and will never be even offered an opportunity like that. I turned every single one of them away, like nicely. It wasn't anything to do with the company. It was just like. I don't have the time, I have a full-time job, this is just something that I do to enjoy my free time 
I don't want to put pressure on myself to like going fishing and thinking, oh my God, like I have to provide content. I have to catch fish. Like, I think that's just going to take a little bit of the joy from fishing yeah. away. Like all that pressure that you have to catch fish and you have to provide content. But the, the, the heartbreaking thing for me always was that how many companies approached me to ask me if I want to be sponsored or, or, or whatever deal they were offering me just because I was a female. female. You were approached by what I regard as being a hyper brand who don't even have any involvement in either fly fishing or lure fishing, the two types of fishing that you do the most. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. That was a real eye-opener. That six months for me, once you once your kind of name had got out there, that was a real eye-opener for me. But the thing is now, staggered. because I said no so many times, <laughs> no one's approaching me. No one wants to touch you. <laughs> no one wants to approach me. I was saying to Andy, oh, wouldn't it be nice if someone like came up to me and said, oh, would you like to be sponsored or would you like so to try this out? I'm like, yeah, literally, no one's interested no. in me. I said no so many times that everyone's like, well, forget about her. You know who needs to sponsor you? You. Gordon's gin. Oh, yes, please. <laughs> we talk about gin more than we talk about fishing. Gin and ice cream. <laughs> uh, Adrian is saying, fish have found out the signal crave Grace are highly nutritious, uh, hence the size of chub in barber lately. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. They're chowing on those crayfish. Uh, Philip is saying with new anglers, especially kids, it shouldn't matter how they catch a fish. The fish is what's going to encourage them and spur them out and carry on the sport. Yes, and learn. yes, yes, yes. Absolutely, 100% agree with everything Philip has just said. Uh, Russell is saying, at the moment I would go fishing in a tornado. I totally <laughs> agree with you, Russell. <laughs> um, Craig is saying, nothing wrong with the river bream, David. River bream pull back. Oh, yeah, and then you have to hold them. And bleh. Bleh. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, BCB saying, I'm sure we all have one, but a family member who is always telling you they have caught a 20 pound, eight, 20 pound, 28 pound pike or a five pound perch from a menu that just couldn't be possible to hold them. Uh, then the story changes next time. Oh, that, that on most big waters will have that BS story about the pike that bit a dog's leg off. <laughs> Or you know you can't you can't let your dog swim in this stretch of river because a pike will eat it. Yeah. 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 There's a few of those. Uh, Craig saying excellent work, Kai B. I'm assuming that's about my flies. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Adam Price Hunter saying my final mode, my final moan. Honest. 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 Why the competition in fishing between anglers? It's anglers against the fish. Why do people act like it's anglers against each other? So is, is that a gripe specifically about competition angling? Or is that just kind of a natural okay, competitiveness between, anglers, between yeah. well, I will always be competitive with you. We will always be competitive. I am never competitive unless I'm winning. You are the most competitive person. Have you not noticed? I'm never going to be competitive unless I'm winning. Yeah, which point? After the point where I'm winning... I am then the most competitive person yeah. up to that point, and I'm like, no, it's not about that. <laughs> yeah, or we'll be fishing away, and I'd be able to come up to him and she'd go, I've uh, just had another four fish, by the way. You want to you crack on a little bit? <laughs> Cheers, Doug. Um, do you know what it is saying? How about free wine? Mm. Yeah. I wouldn't say no to any we, free alcohol. The fact that we could get a sponsorship from Hardy's Wine, because that would yes. be fishing relevant. Please. <laughs> Who would touch a peasant like me? No one. Not without a name on the bottle. <laughs> a Yorkshire fisherman, what drives me crazy is litter left on the banks. Yeah, yeah we kind of covered that. Absolutely, 100%. People, yeah. I think that was one of the real big ones. But actually, because it annoys so many people, that means that a lot of people care. So that's definitely a minority, isn't it? So I'm just going to run quickly through the comments. You pick one that you have. Um, so we have Yorkshireman uh, saying, please promote, we all need to work together about littering our waterways. Absolutely. Uh, Corey Cameron saying, hi guys, I'm still water fly anglers from Scotland. Uh, started the fly a year ago and starting to catch more slowly, but I'm struggling finding the depth to fish at. Any tips? I'm, I'm ever so sorry. Oh, well, you're I, not listening. I totally missed all that because I was trying to find a specific comment. Uh, well, there's a, a still water fly angler in Scotland who just started and he wants to know any tips of how to find the depth of the water where the fish are. Oh, but I guess the, the only real way of doing that is having enough lines in your bag that you can go through the options. Uh, chances are that if you're stood at, at the side of a lake, there will be a fish in front of you. It's where it is in 20, 30 feet of water column. 
that will make the difference between catching that fish or not. All of it, all of the still water flying is kind of a 3D activity, whereas rivers is kind of 2D because they're not that deep. So it's about having your floating line, your intermediate, you're gonna need a slow sinker, you want a medium sinker, you want a really fast sinker, and just going through those options and figuring out which one it is on that day. And actually during the day as it gets hotter and colder, they will move up and down in the water column as well. I think one of the one of the key skills of your still water angler is to be able to predict or at the very least keep up to date with where those fish are in the water column because there will be an area where most of the fish are. John Owen is saying, I remember you saying that a particular new rod was a lot better than the previous one, which you described as being a bit of a dog. Honesty counts. Oh, which one was that, I wonder? I'm trying to think. What rod was a shit rod? Oh. oh, I can't remember. Adam is saying, no tuck. Uh, I mean, when anglers get a little too serious with it, I love a good friendly, friendly competition or heckling my fishing buddies if I'm catching more than them. Uh, Adrian saying well done on you, IB, for not jumping on the sponsorship bandwagon. Yeah, the ad didn't feel right. And, and to be fair, probably one of the best advice I've had from people surrounding me, they were all saying like, no, don't do it. Like it will take the credit away from you if you have something given to you before you did all the groundwork and are oh, actually really good. It was just weird. Yeah, it, it was, was really, really weird. weird. Yeah. You, you would probably been fishing for six months yeah. and some of the biggest brands in fishing and like really big brands it was a, it was a real shock to me that really was that was a brands. real eye opener yeah now i regret not taking it i could be like one of the most popular anglers you need to get, you your get a tip out yeah. or something <laughs> um <laughs> Ethan is saying, oh, sorry, no, but there's a, another comment. Paz is saying, it's interesting to see these lives because I can see point of views from a different country. Yeah, and absolutely. Well, if, yeah, if, 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 if it's different in Italy, please feel free to, to drop in a comment and let us know if, if any of the attitudes are slightly different to what we're saying. Craig Palmer is saying, no mucus or slime on river breams and daisy. That's that's what I was telling you when I came from Not and it. I was touching them. Not they, even it. All the, all the river breams, they didn't have any slime on them. Not it was weird. It. It's not rockets. Ethan is saying, I dare you to go bream fishing when lockdown is lifted. I made that comment saying if the lockdown is still on, I would literally settle for bream fishing. Do you know what? Actually, that might make quite a fun vlog at some point. We're going to do some bream fishing. Haven't been fishing for seven or eight weeks, but I'm going to go first thing I'm going to bream. <laughs> first thing I want to catch is bream. You're out of this world. <laughs> While the mayflies are hatching silently, um, Mark Hall is saying, IB, how do I place an order for 120 of your flies? Oh, Craig, there we go. There's a, there's a deal. Mark Hall, can you pay me in wine? <laughs> or gin? Um, Adam is saying, no, Andy, it's against people not talking to others, people being snotty if you start catching a few, and they are, and those that won't even tell you if they have been fishing a dry or in for fear. I have met people like that. Yeah, I mean, the, the, as anglers, you, you, you can share a bit of information, can't you? It's something, actually, I think, I think my clients have seen me do on the Y, but... It, if you bump into an angler and they say, oh God, I'm having a tough day and you've figured out what the code is for that day, just tell them you're taking blue winged olive spinners or there's a couple of hawthorns dropping and they seem to want to pick those out more. There's nothing. Just tell them. Just tell them, hey, we're all in this for the same thing. There's nothing. Yeah. We, we got to be a I bit would be like that. I'd be like, yeah, I am using size 28 <laughs> spinner <laughs> while we're having a massive cat design. Yeah. Um... Danny Parkin saying, I hate that the industry has lost its grassroots of angling media like magazines, etc. I spent years traveling, doing features all over the world. Do you see Anglia media returning like it was? No, no, not a chance, not a chance. But that's the same in most in most forms of media these days. The, the world, the world has changed. And the reality is the big publishers didn't keep up with it. Um, Bauer have been hemorrhaging titles left, right and centre. Uh, we lost uh, Total Fly Fisher. As well, uh, some of the others are in real trouble. It's the whole paper magazine thing. It's it's over. Yeah. As far as I can see, it's pretty much over. The, the a couple of the big titles will probably still cling on. I think Fly Culture is a really interesting one in that that that's not reliant on advertising. Uh, it's produced as a high quality magazine or a high quality paper and doesn't have any adverts. It's in. almost like a book, like a monthly book you receive. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 a bit indie and it's different, but the business model to me appears to be a bit more sustainable because they're not relying on advertising um and that's that's the issue with these magazines the issue isn't content i mean you know, fishing's fishing there's always going to be content creators and there's always going to be 
articles, but if these magazines can't pull in the advertising revenue from the manufacturers, then they're not sustainable. And the reality is that these manufacturers are now starting to look at, I don't know, let, social media influencers. Let's pull it, yeah, let's pull it right around and say these, these manufacturers now want to put their money into influencers rather than onto paper advertising. And, and that, that's, that's how it's going to stay, is the reality. It's only going to get harder for the magazines. I think so. Um, so we have uh, BCB saying, like, right, I have that both is, is wild, lower fishing canal, will often drag up my, many bogs, bags of ash from their boat fireplace rather than burn them. <laughs> we had a drink there, Duck. Been a long day, has it? <laughs> I need my glasses. Many bogs. No, many, many bogs. You know what threw me off? I was bending over earlier to take my drink and I completely knocked it and the whole drink spilled all over the carpet and I just played it cool. And, I, and you, you saw that. I saw that. it happen, yeah. <laughs> and we've been you so, made professional. It so professional. Never spilled. Like, Totally gonna ignore it while there's a puddle of Half a litre of gin and tonic all over the living room at the moment. Do you want a bit? No. Do you want a bit of my bit? No, you sure? I'm all right. I'm all right. I understand this is a difficult moment for <laughs> that you. That started shaking. <laughs> uh, that's why I was so flustered. I, saw, I just kept I know. <laughs> thinking about the gin on the floor. Um, yep. Craig is saying, hey, Andy, your moobs are getting there. Maybe you should get yours out. Oh, yes. dude. Come on. It's. <laughs> It's lockdown weight. We've all got we've all got a little bit of lockdown weight, all right. Lockdown we've all had a barbecue weight. or two. Uh Ray Ryan is saying, how do you catch a tench? Ooh, bit of sweet corn fished about six inches over depth. In the lily, lily pads. pads. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what? That's something that I don't do a lot of bait fishing anymore. We don't do a lot of bait fishing anymore, but I love just first couple of weeks of the season, sneaking out early in the morning, just catching a couple of tench. That's something that I've never quite shaken off. There's there's a, a there's a, a romanticism about early morning tent fishing that's just yeah. beautiful it's irresistible there they are the mornings that i imagine the rest of the world imagines when they think about fishing and it can be quite beautiful and like the scenery could be see yeah it's a little estate lake lily pads reeds birds scuttling around mist coming off the water big tench on the end a few ducks somewhere oh yes when yeah. are we going um, the only problem that I have to fishing for attention is that you can't avoid green. <laughs> <sighs> um, Craig Pover is saying, free fishing on the steps at Trent Lock, some nice green to be caught on plus two pubs, I be No, Craig, stop telling me about green. You should only chuck it on the floor anyway. <laughs> Uh, Zach is saying the sponsors want a female advocate to promote angling on women or because women help sell their products to men. That's the question I'll be asking. Very good question, Zach. I honestly don't know. You tell me, would you, like, because I was so, when, when all the deals and everything started to come in, I was literally just started fishing. If it is to sell and promote their products, would you have trusted my opinion as an angler after I've been fishing, even for, for now, like I've been fishing now, for what four or five years? Yeah, and very very often, like if it's not locked down, we will be out every weekend and oh, after yeah, work yeah, in yeah. the summer. And I do do quite a few days on the water in a year. But even after four years, would you trust and respect my decision on the tackle now, or would you have done it six months ago when I was offered deals and literally had no clue? about any of it. I was just doing it because it was fun and I was still learning everything. It was a pretty shallow reflection of the industry. Of the industry, at yeah. At that point, wasn't it? It was so weird. So weird. Yeah. But but I guess the point is, do, is, is a woman holding a fishing rod with a norks out more likely to make you want to know more about that fishing rod no. than a grizzly old bloke who's got 40 years worth of experience saying, saying the same thing this is a really good rod which one is more likely to make you want to go and have another look at that item i, I, I don't know the answer I, I know what my answer would be it would be it would be the grizzly old bloke yeah. because that is everything i aspire to be and but, you <laughs> trust that person's this idea of some blonde with an orcs out who clearly can't tie her own hook on saying that this is the best rod on the planet and exactly oh, what Oh, Runa, don't be here. Yeah, all right. Well, you, but you know what I mean? It's it, No, it doesn't It doesn't do it for me. But it yeah. must do it for someone because well, it literally, keeps happening. But I, again, I don't think it's people trusting the person's decision on it necessarily. Like even, oh, I saw like, oh, I saw it be on Instagram. She fished for six months, but she had her tits out and she's recommended this whatever rod. 
would you go out and buy it? No, it's very easy to press a like on Instagram. Are you gonna go and trust that person's decision and spend and invest into your fishing tackle? Most likely not. I wouldn't. Would you? Well, well, I, I guess the, I guess the truth is the only people who will know the answers to this are probably the guys who work in the marketing departments of these companies. Sure. Or if they don't know the answer, they're going to start finding out pretty soon because they'll have invested quite a lot of time, money, and kit in these people, and they'll all of a sudden not be getting the returns that they return, expect. Yeah. But even now, like I am, I'm so glad that I haven't done and signed up for any deals or any offers when everything was thrown at me, because. I think I would have like gone into a deep end and then would just found myself lost not knowing what yeah. I was doing and like so much pressure on you all the time. Well, we spoke about this a lot of the time, didn't we? I think you did exactly the right thing. I hope so. Uh, Marvel saying, I be with half and half do, six gin, six wine. Best day ever. Best day ever. <laughs> when are you coming over, Mark? <laughs> uh, Ryan is saying, I'm going fishing tomorrow in a small river for pike with lures. Do you have any tips? Well, I guess it depends on the river. I mean, the first, first thing you want to do is make sure they're not spawning. Um, we're, we're possibly past that kind of time for pike, but I would definitely make sure if you're seeing paired up fish, I'd probably leave them alone. Um, I must admit, I don't do a lot of pike fishing at this time of year. I put the pike rods down. For any. Uh, <laughs> well, I put the pike rods down as soon as I start to see evidence of them spawning, usually in March, middle of March, and would probably only pick them up to do some topwater stuff much later in the evenings in the summer um, where we'd only really start going back for them properly in probably the uh, first or second week of September and that's if we've got a cool September um, so top waters stuff like that if they're if they're not spawning or if they look like they've spawned then top waters and stuff like that will do it um, it'll all come down to the venue I guess it's kind of saying do you think technology is becoming a part of fishing now because I don't like technology to hunt out the fish I would rather work from my fish and learn the next time I go on what works and don't work. Well, I guess that I guess the real point in case here is 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 the deeper fish finder, um, which which uh, I think is an absolutely incredible piece of kit. We have, we have nothing to what well, I don't think we have anything to do with deeper. Um, I know you you knew the guy, didn't you, or one of the it's Lithuanian company. So yeah, yeah, Lithuanian company, men, Lith and deeper, very very cool actually. I love deeper. Absolutely, I love both of my deepers. Incredible pieces of kit. It's not for everyone, but this idea that fish finders have only just come around is absolute nonsense. And just... they don't find you fit, they just show you yeah, structures. Yeah, yeah, like it's... it's so much more to find out really quickly. Whatever you would have to spend. Um, a, a week casting out and planning out and marking the the bottom of the of the lake where you're fishing. You could do that in a day, and no, I know it's a shortcut, but not everyone has the time yeah. to do it. Some people may be able to only go out and fish three or four times a year. Not everyone's fortunate enough to, to, enough to go every weekend. It, it was fascinating, especially we were using it on big waters as yeah, well. Well, yeah, I mean it's 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 one of those things where as as a as a carp angler, yeah, you could spend two weeks marking out a lake and have a rough map marked out. You could do that in a day with a deeper, have a really good map marked out. I, I can't see why you wouldn't. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's not like it's not like this thing is going down there and wrenching fish out for you. It, it, it's a feature finder. Yeah. It's, a, it's a contour finder. Uh, but I guess more largely, technology is going to become more of a part of fishing as it becomes more part of everything else, where, be it stuff like deeper that's got electronic chip stuff in it, or whether it's the technology to create faster, lighter fishing rods, or whether it's the technology to create better reels, the technology is going to have an impact. Look at those fish finders now that look like ultra. Ah, oh, the ah, oh, the yeah, the Sonic, the, the no live scope, the Garmin yeah, live scope. How cool is that? Though? So weird, they literally yeah. can see the lure being dropped onto the fish, and they can see the fish being hooked and like pulled away. I don't care what people say, like cheating or not cheating, that requires skill. Yeah. yeah to literally yeah. drop it on the fish while looking on the monitor and like, it's so cool. Oh, those, those guys who do the Plagic Xander in Holland and places like that, I think that's incredibly skilled. So, yeah, so cool. Yeah, it would be impossible to do without yeah. the fish finder because you're having to find individual fish. Uh, Danny Barkin saying, oh, here we go, girls having to sex it up to promote fishing. Stop it, Andy. Stop Sorry. sexing it out. Sorry. <laughs> really can't pisses my natural me off. Sex. Uh, girls have it hard enough in the industry without competing with that. Well, okay, well I guess the good news is that, is that there are the plenty of women out there who have proven that you don't have to get it all out just to develop a name. And, it, and actually, I think that if you don't get it out, 
by the time you've developed that name and perfectively craft, people will respect, will respect you more for it. Because actually, like um, the anonymous sender that sent, the female angler that sent uh, the comment to you, the looks will go and your tips will go as well at some point. You're not going to be wanting to be late 40s, early 50s or even to 60s and still casting and fishing in the bikini. The looks will go, but you're going to have to back it up then. Yeah, you're going to have to have learned to fish by then because be, there'll be nothing else to back it up. And at that point, it will be too late to go back and be all serious. I'm going to write books and tips on how to fishing now because it's going to be way too late. You already have a, a name built for yourself. Yeah. Um, so we have Adrian who's saying he loves his deeper. Use my deeper on a kayak just to find depths and structures. Yeah, that, that's where it's at its best. Uh, Mark Wallace saying, right, I'm off to get a wine and a gin. Thanks again for an awesome stream. Catch you both on the flip side. Cheers, Mark. Thank you very much. See you later, Mark. Um, BCP saying, have you seen the Abu Smart Rod? Have you watched your crest to buy and it records your exact spot? Apparently yeah, I saw about that. that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's got, a, it's got a, a GPS and a chip in it, so it knows where you are. It connects to your phone and it, it apparently detects when you're playing a fish. Yeah, uh, it, it looked to give it to me. Yeah. I, didn't, yeah, I didn't get that at all. I wasn't a massive fan of that at all. Uh, I've seen it, but it's not going to take off. Okay. I, it's, it's not going to change fishing. Well, do you have any more uh, comments or would you like to add something else yourself? Uh, well, actually, we, I think we, we covered the real big ones on mine. Um, we've been through the kind of the internet anglers and the pro staff. That was a real big one. Uh, uh, the public we've covered, canoeists we've covered. Uh, female anglers. Female Not anglers covered. was a big one. Sponsored anglers we've definitely covered. Uh, kind of the snobbery. It was interesting, actually. Most of the most of the stuff that you guys sent in all roughly kind of followed a theme. Litter yeah. was a big one. And actually, I think one of the things that, that we could all take from this is that while there are a number of things that we all kind of find a bit irritating or annoying sometimes about this stuff, there are um, common opinions and common feelings about really important stuff. The, the vast majority of people hate it when they see litter and stuff knocking around. The vast majority of people don't want to see people handle fish badly and will feel inclined to say something if they see someone handling a fish badly and stuff like that. So I guess from this, even though this kind of comes from a negative place of our oh, tell us what annoys you, actually, the real positive that comes out of this is that, that you guys, like we do, give a shit about this stuff and care about um, the fish and the ecosystems. Yeah. And we want to see it get better. And that, that was definitely the thing that came through to me from this was that fish ang fishermen, anglers, are pretty good people generally. We all care. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's probably about the right point for me to scoot off around the other side of the camera and let IP sign you guys off. You go. So I'm going to get his tips out. <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. I'll catch you later. Thanks, guys, for watching. Kirk Palmer just said thanks, guys, again. BCP, goodbye. Zach, bye. Bye, everyone. Really nice to chat with you guys again. And we will see you next Saturday. I need to go and refill my gym now that is all over the floor. <laughs>